Hello and welcome back to the channel Airbus What's It Doing Now and welcome to uh, today's episode of Tear and Share. Today I'd like to take a look specifically at the Emma Elec Manon push button and what happens if we press it when the aircraft is in normal electrical configuration that is to say that AC bus 1 and 2 are powered normally. Well, of course, the real question here is why, why would you ever need to press it? Well, you wouldn't do in normal circumstances. Really, only in the event of having to set the emergency electrical configuration, say in the case of uh, smoke uh, QRH, for example. But I have seen it on a couple of occasions during an emergency descent um, in the event of a sudden loss of cabin pressure where the crew uh, have been required to press the mask man on in the uh, oxygen uh, section of the overhead panel uh, in order to ensure the deployment of the oxygen masks for the passengers. They've reached up instead of pressing that they've reached up and pressed the Emma Elec power man on. Now, taking a look at the overhead panel here, you can see that uh, the two buttons, the oxygen man on and the MO elect push buttons are quite close together on the same side of the overhead panel. You can imagine with a ill-fitting mask that is starting to fog up and in the, the, the stress of the situation, um, inadvertently uh, making an incorrect uh, selection. I say I don't see it that frequently but it is ha has happened on, on on more than one occasion but you can see how easy it might be uh, to make that sel misselection given the sort of the geography of those two switches and the uh, stress of the uh, situation so some care and uh, diligence here is required in order to not make um, you know an incorrect selection so what's going to happen? Is the aircraft going to go into emergency electrical configuration or will it stay in normal configuration? To answer this, we need to go back to the emergency electrical configuration brief, which I gave and also the electrics brief that I gave and more specifically have a look at the priority of uh, electrical generation or the order of priority that Airbus likes in terms of its power source. Now you remember that uh, I like to use the new new uh, mnemonic. I'll get my teeth in in a minute. The mnemonic Gear B, G E A R B. I'll bring it up on the screen for you. So in order of preference, the Airbus likes the generators first. It then looks for an external ground power. It then looks for an APU. It then looks for a RAT and then it'll look for aircraft batteries and it will look for sources in that order of priority and preference. So with that knowledge, then if we've got both generators running and powering AC bus one and two and we deploy the RAT, the RAT is way down the list in terms of priorities. It will do the job in powering AC bus one. Sorry, it will do the job in powering AC essential and DC essential bus. But as long as AC bus one and two are powered by the aircraft generators, well, then it's going to stay in normal electrical configuration really essentially nothing's going to happen the rat's going to deploy uh, supply the electrical um, load for the heart of the system as we like to call it but because ac and one or two are powered um, it's uh, largely a non-event so that's what's going to happen ultimately the passengers are going to be safe and the aircraft stays in normal electrical configuration no alternate or direct law so it's normal law and the full landing capability of the aircraft is restored so cat 3b is available if uh, if so required so perhaps if you did it not a polished uh, performance because we haven't really followed the uh, the procedures correctly but the passengers are going to be safe and the uh, aircraft is um, going to you know function normally uh, electrically so I hope that's uh, given you some sort of uh, meat on the bone. If you'd ever wondered, um, as this crew did in particular, what would happen if uh, if you were to press it inadvertently, um, that um, at least gives you a better understanding uh, to the uh, system. So I'm working on a few more of these. I get lots of questions being asked by crews every day. So hopefully I can share this uh, with you or share you some more stories and uh, some more insights in the very near future. Thanks very much for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching this channel. It's been greatly supported by many, many people. It really is getting out to a, the wider community now. And it seems to be helping pilots who are you know desperate to get back to the skies in keeping them topped up with their knowledge of systems uh, and procedures and being ready 
ready uh, for when we're finally allowed to go flying again. Once again, thanks very much and I'll talk to you again very soon.